The fact is, many taper barrels are very beneficial for certain clarinets used with certain styles of mouthpieces, but they can be problematic and not beneficial uh, in other, with other combinations. For instance, if you do play a very large bore mouthpiece and you're playing uh, an instrument, say, similar to the R13 in style, uh, with its particular predilections toward uh, uh, coloristic uh, and uh, shape instability uh, and so on and so forth, that reverse taper barrel can help very much bring the sound back together again and give you a little more core and a little more stability uh, in the sound uh, throughout the registers. Okay, so that is beneficial. It does have a minimal, minimal effect on the third register but as uh, anyone who's played the R13 for any period of time, they know that the third register flatness is pretty much endemic to the model, and as it is to most small bore clarinets, so I'm not picking on Buffet. Uh, it just uh, tends that small bore clarinets tend to be a little on the low side in the third register, whereas large bore clarinets tend to be on the sharp side in the third register. Go figure, right? Um, but if you're playing a smaller bore mouthpiece, say a standard Van Doren, a mouthpiece with about a 585 or 586 bore, uh, as opposed to the uh, 589, 590, 591 bores that you would find in the larger bore mouthpieces like the Gigliotti, um, my own professional mouthpiece, um, the M13 models, and so on and so forth. If you're playing a smaller bore mouthpiece and you combine it with a Manic Taper barrel, what you're going to get basically is more brightness. It's going to brighten up the sound quite a bit. Uh, it's not going to particularly help you uh, play the third register any better in tune, per se, uh, and you're probably better off with a barrel that will give you a little more flexibility and warmth since you're already building in quite a bit of, of um, you say, focus and, and uh, and density in the sound with that smaller bore mouthpiece, especially if it's in combination with uh, a chamber uh, that is, uh, that is uh, fairly narrow and already concentrates the sound. The whole point of building f equipment formulas with the clarinet is to achieve a fine balance of things. And whenever you go to any extreme, uh, then what you're going to get is very, very limited results. If, for instance, you take a clarinet bore that is very flexible and resonant and um, gives a lot of coloristic uh, variations and very docile um, to, to uh, changes that you might make as a player. And you put that with a, say, um, large bore barrel and a large bore mouthpiece and a wide chamber, uh, then you're going to have almost no concentration in the sound. And any concentration you do get is going to be achieved at extreme labor on your behalf. Most classical clarinet players are always looking for a sound that has good concentration, good focus, stability, and evenness throughout. So that kind of formula may be good for a jazz player, but it's a disaster for uh, a cl classical clarinet player. If you want equipment to work with you, you have to have a balanced formula uh, so that you'll be able to achieve any number of things that you want to, to achieve with a maximum amount of ease. Again, equipment is no substitute. Equipment's not going to play the clarinet for you, but what it'll do is it'll make it easier for you to achieve that concept that you have in your head and that you have in your ear, okay? So don't just plug in a piece of equipment mindlessly and say, gee, just because everybody uses it or because it's got some kind of famous reputation that it must be something great and I have to have it. Think intelligently about your equipment, analyze your equipment, know what that equipment does for you and why you're using it. You'll be a lot happier, and the job will be a lot easier. As you know, that's always been my message over and over again. So with that, I'll see you again. And hey, watch that Department of Feral Instigation.